Welcome to a new test and teardown video. Look at this funny, funny old thing. It's quite heavy. I think it's from a company called Danbridge. And it's a sweep oscillator type TM3. And uh, yeah, it's, it's wired for 220 volts AC. So it's that old. You need to write it as you know, alternating current. Really? And no indication about what is on and off. Um, and also, we got some, this is a banana, and okay, the sweep. So is this in or out? And here we got some millivolts. So I guess this will be output. And another funny thing is, it's megacycles per second. And you can turn it here like that. So, so it's obviously one to twenty-one megahertz oscillator somehow with some sweep thing. I don't know exactly how this is working. I think we just just should definitely just power it up and see if there is any kaboom inside. Yeah, let's let's just do it I think we are ready and it turns out of course this is millivolts so if we crank this all the way up and my scope is in 200 millivolts per division all right so let's turn on okay it's actually ooh I can feel Feel the power. Okay, we got. Ooh. So it's warming up. Oh, this can't be good. Uh, what exactly is this? Okay, so if, if we zoom in a lot. Oh, yo, 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 yo. This is the funky signals of stuff. But look, it's 21 megahertz and I'm at, at 11. Ugh. This can't be good. What exactly are we looking at? So it's modulated with some other funny stuff. Ah, this is mains. Oh, this is ripple. And okay, okay. So there's definitely some uh, voltages that is not stable in there. So that is why it's uh, it's doing its thing. So there's a capacitor that's not working, definitely. Because what we see here is, if we zoom in, okay, we got, we got some frequencies and they're doing some super duper jumpy here. Let's try and get this stable. And what if I tune the, I don't know about this sweep. Okay, ah, so that is the frequency when I'm adjusting. And not the other stuff, that is some over... Ooh! Okay. Well, well. Something is definitely working. <laughs> well, what do you see? <laughs> Alright. I gotta see inside this thing. What is this? I think it actually looks a little bit like old BNK or old uh, radio meter as well. Uh, the way that this uh, case was uh, made uh, and and uh, also with the labels and stuff screwed into the front so it, it's probably from the 50s 1950s or something because after 1960s people didn't really use this kind of method uh, with the screws and stuff anymore um, so let's let's try and lift this up <laughs> Yeah, I think I guessed right about 1950s. Look at the look at the tubes. That is some beautiful, beautiful tube uh, tubes. So that is a rectifier tube, of course. <laughs> and the smell here is a little bit special. <clears throat> This is old. 
What have we got here? A G43R. I don't know exactly those. But they are old. What I want to do is measure the voltage on this capacitor because this is, I think, as you can see here, mains, uh, mains transformator and the input to the rectifier diode. From the uh, rectifier diode, we go uh, um, via this inductor. So this is a really good filter inductor. And and then it goes to this, uh, I think this is a double capacitor. And this is why you see. So this is ground and this is uh, will be the two different positives. So this is, I think I will measure this and then let's play a little bit with this. Oh, we also need to have a look what is in here. That will be some of the funky stuff. Yep. That's probably a capacitor and some good stuff. Look at that. It is a bra. No, it is aluminium cast or some really special aluminium plates. No way. We need to open this. <laughs> we are inside. See? The sides there are they casted the sides in aluminium and it looks a little bit like homebrew casting or something like that oi 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 this is old we've also got some green goopy de goop and this coil so this is definitely some high frequency stuff but it also explains this thing is uh, oscillating from 1 megahertz to 21 megahertz so of course this is uh, how it's made a little trimmer there that size side and they play like the output coupling in doctor is done like that and you can trim this from the outside yeah and that is the charge capacitor neutrophone so that will be the yeah it's looking a little bit swollen this capacitor well and this ECH21 EF40, EF42, another EF42, and this one is a G43, also known as an 85A1, whatever that is, 1249, hey, maybe this is the 49, I think that is actually the year, because that explains, and I said 50s, right? So I was only <laughs> only one year away. Yeah, this is definitely. It looks so much like that time period when you look at everything here. Let's look a little bit of, in AC mode. See, this is our rectifier. This is the first side of the cap. Twenty-one volts of AC, and after this big big filter here we go 19 volts of AC I mean this cap just don't work at all and this is a voltage regulator tube and they light up really really beautiful so let's look at the capacitor in DC mode so we got 270 and then 250. So like 20 volts of DC over this inductor. But of course, it will be like a million windings to create a huge inductance. So there's also a lot of DC resistance in this. But what we can do is we can turn this off and we can measure the, the DC uh, resistance. 
and then we know the current uh, it's using uh, in the anode supply and also I measured a little bit uh, about 300 volts when it was cold um, the cool thing about using rectifier diodes that is the rectifier diodes start getting hot at the same time as all the other tubes gets hot so you normally don't see a huge peak in uh, in L anode voltage um, so that is good but um, and then you sometimes see people upgrading stuff with uh, silicium diodes or stuff instead of the rectifier diode and then you get a huge peak and you need to be careful about your capacitors and stuff oh, as you can imagine so this is the capacitor right i'm just measuring one of them three microfarads and 300 ohms at 100 hertz let's uh let's try the other one let's be sure that we got a good connection and of course if this is what you got left and and all this serious resistance so it's supposed to be 16 and 32 320 volts and uh, 350 for short time can is negative made in denmark hellisons and the thing is it's really really light weight oh, it's actually a lot of fun to open those and uh, find out how how they made them when i was measuring um well we can actually do this then i will show you guys what is happening with old time capacitors like this they were really designed for super low frequencies so now let's let's look at what happens when you change the frequency so that is 100 hertz let's go to one kilohertz and see the capacity gets goes away right so and it's it's because the way that it's made see i had a hundred kilohertz there's like nothing left oh, this is gross so this is the capacitor it's just completely dissolved inside of all its acids and stuff and there's a rub rubber band around it oh my god this is bad and there is a powerful stink of gross gross chemicals so I'm, oh no let's just try and put in some capacitors that's like 30 year, years younger <laughs> i've been uh, i found them in a random box and they're very old as well well look at the specs 50 micro and 0. Point nothing ohms and they read 47 so <laughs> that is something let's try and put in those two and see how this unit's gonna work okay i'm sorry it's not looking super pretty or anything but let's power it up and see how it works so let's measure ac voltage on the first one Ooh. so that is the first one right so let's look after the filter and let's look on that one oy, 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 that is some kind of let me see now i got that is some kind of a difference right so let's look at the output what is that is one point something megahertz let's do a zoom in Ooh, it's doing some sweepity sweepity is that because of the sweep yeah There is some odd modulation here. It is... What the heck is this doing? Oh, that is funny. I don't know. 
exactly what to say about this. We've got two different frequencies, and if I'm trimming on the main oscillation frequency, then there's definitely some some kind of funny stuff is going on. And yeah, see, there's some frequency variation stuff. This is me touching, and then I'm turning it down. So this is the the sweep input. So it's so sensitive. Now I'm cranking it up and then ooh. But the oscillator itself is unstable. That's funny. I don't know, maybe I can find another dead capacitor in here. <laughs> Look at this. There's something. See? Ooh. So that means one of the frequencies it's actually getting better and better the more I move it, but you also see got some light, some filament in the tubes, and they get nice and warm. Actually, you're kind of burning your fingers on them, and then this one, ooh, like almost ice cold. Really? That can't be good. It's actually only the heat from, huh? That's definitely not working, that one. It is ice cold, and those are ooh, burning, burning hot. But it's also a different type. So it could have been something to do with the filament as well. So this is like a micro watt uh, filament, and those are a lot of watts filament. I don't know. But I can't see anything glowing in it. Mm-hmm.